Banyana Banyana coach Desiree Ellis says the players know what is at stake and don't need any motivation for this evening's second leg of their 2024 Paris Olympic Games qualifier against Nigeria. The 61-year-old says they have tried to manage the players as best they could since the first leg in Abuja on Friday evening to ensure they are in a good shape for the crucial encounter at the Loftus Versfeld in Pretoria. Meanwhile, the Gauteng provincial government has announced that it will provide free how train as rides to the stadium in a bid to garner support for South Africa's most successful national football team. The first leg in Abuja between the Super Falcons and Banyana Banyana was a game of two halves. The host had the upper hand in the first half and earned a penalty on the stroke of halftime which they converted to take the lead. The South Africans played much better in the second half but failed to score and Nigeria won by solitary gold. Banyana have to replicate the performance they displayed against Nigeria in the second half of the first leg, but also score goals to seal qualification for the Olympics. We know we are better than what we showed in Nigeria. We can do way better than that. I think the second half showed, you know, um, how well we can play, but it's a match that we have to win. Um, and as you say, it's a do or die match. So we have to put everything into it um, to make sure that we, that we get the goal early to be able to then kick start from there. But we know that it's not going to be easy nonetheless because Nigeria's got the one goal lead and uh, we have to be prepared for every eventuality of how we think they might play. Banyana Banyana only arrived back in the country on Sunday and had just one day to prepare for the match. However, Eli says the players are in good shape and will give it their best shot. I think we all know what's at stake. I don't think we need any motivation where that is concerned. Uh, we travelled back really well, had a good rest uh, to the final session, which is which is uh, which is today, and then it's on to the game tomorrow. So we've been trying to manage that along with the medical team as well, to make sure that we have everybody in good shape uh, and ready to give it our, our best shot. The gates at Loftus Festival will open at five o'clock or two and a half hours before kick off. The match will be broadcast live on SABC Three. Pacing out of ABC News, Johannesburg. All right, staying with Banyana Banyana now, let's bring in a News 24 sports reporter and SABC sports analyst, Kanyiso Chwaku, for a preview ahead of that game this evening. Thank you so much for your time. So, Coach Desiree Ellis saying there that this is a do or die match. Just how crucial is this match for Banyana Banyana? Um, good afternoon, Unati, and good afternoon to the viewers. Look, it's straightforward. They win, they go to Paris, they lose, they have to watch the Olympics from home. Um, that's the consequence of uh, the result. And I think they, the, it's either easy or hard. The straightforward part is that um, there's no um, there's no away goals. But if the game ends one all at uh, one nil at full time, the game goes to extra time. And if then uh, it's not it's not settled after extra time. It goes to penalties. The, 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 the simple matter for Banyana Banyana is they just need to score more goals in Nigeria. The best part is for them not to concede. If they don't concede and they score two or more, then they're good to go. Um, the key is to make sure that they, they, they score and score early. Um, because the, the longer the game drags, um, the more pressure they'll be under to produce a result. And remember that um, Nigeria haven't been to the Olympics since the Beijing uh, edition in 2008. South Africa haven't been to the Olympics um, since the Rio edition in 2016. So these are teams, um, two of Africa, Africa's best sides, fighting out for one spot um, for the Olympics. I actually, I actually even said to one of my media colleagues that qualifying for the Olympics is actually harder than qualifying for the World Cup because for the World Cup, if you're able to get into the semifinals, you've pretty much done the job because you've got four, I think they, 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 there are more World Cup spots available than there are for the Olympics. Um, South Africa have traversed three rounds to get here and they now need to make sure that they get past this game to actually ensure that they actually get it all to, to the Olympics for the first time since 2016. What are some of the things that they then need to watch out for in as far as Nigeria is concerned? Like you say, you know, Nigeria also wants it just as bad as South Africa. Look, they need to be sharp defensively. Um, the one thing that Nigeria have done is they've played cons conservatively 
but they've also been a team that has used the cow their counterattack very effectively. And I think that's the last thing that South Africa will want to do um, is to have defensive lapses because the moment Nigeria scores, the mountain will be um, a bit higher for South Africa, even though um, they don't have to worry about the Wakos rule. For example, if the game ends 2-1, um, they still have to go to extra time. Um, then if that is not settled, they didn't go to penalties. But uh, the easiest thing for Wanyana is to make sure that they shut up shop at the back, but also ensure that they put Nigeria under enough pressure um, to force them to concede goals. So it, they, it, it, they, the margins of error for Banyana Banyana are very, very, very minimal, um, if not non-existent. Um, they'll understand that um, at this point in time, one mistake can and will become costly for the hopes to qualify for the Olympics. So, one, they need to finish well, need to convert um, whatever goal-scoring opportunities that come away in Nigeria, very solid defensively solid team. So, those goal-scoring opportunities will be few and far between. I think the joy, though, is that the weather has improved significantly over the day. I mean, I mean it rained heavily last night, it rained heavily this morning. One would have, who would have had a concern over the state of the pitch um, at Loftus first felt, remembering that there was a Champions League game on Sunday, there was a a, a Champions Cup game on Saturday, so the pitch only had Sunday race before the two teams at the match day minus one training sessions. I'm at the ground, so at least with the weather improving, I think one would feel that like, uh, so will the pitch, and one hopes that uh, Banyana Banyana, who were, um, who were not happy with the fact that um, the pitch was not cut to suit their planks, that will find far more amenable and did differently amenable conditions in Sunnyside. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, irrespective of who actually comes out the victor here for this qualifier, just talk to us very briefly in terms of what to expect ahead of the Paris or at the Paris Olympic Games of 2024. Yeah. Look, the long short of it is that the cast spots are the only ones that haven't been decided. So now the draw was that I'm not sure if the I think I, I think I may be correct, but I think the draw has taken place. But now every other confederation has completed its qualification process. The pro qualification process that's being awaited for is the CAF one. And remember that uh, African football. I mean, we've seen with the men's, we've seen at club level um, with the men's and women's. Um, it's no walk in the park. Um, Banyana's walk to get to this path has not been easy. Nigeria will testament to the same. Um, so, look, I mean, um, even just getting to the Olympics is an achievement. As I said, that one of the, I think, uh, one of the, the, the goal scorer um, for Nigeria um, actually stated, her name is Skeksis, but stated that she's been to every tournament but has not been to Olympics. Um, remember that now the 2008 Olympics was 16 years ago. So that is a very long time for a team um, of Nigeria's caliber not to be at the Olympics. And in the time that they haven't been to the Olympics, South Africa has been to the Olympics twice. So now we've got a clash of teams who missed out on the previous Olympics number one and teams who have a very, very strong rivalry. Initially, it used to be very lopsided between South Africa and Nigeria. But remember now, over the past 12 years, 12, 11 to 12 years, South Africa have turned around um, Nigeria's dominance significantly. Remember that South Africa actually beat Nigeria um, on their way to winning the, uh, the Women's African Cup of Nations. So South Africa now that Nigeria are beautiful. They've beaten them in the past. They know that in the present they can do so, and they've got enough structures to be able to deal with Nigeria in the future. So it's not a case of where uh, South Africa are walking into the dark against a team that uh, may have faced them in the past. Yes, Nigeria were once uh, the overly dominant force um, on the African continent when it came to uh, women's football. But I think those scales have evened out significantly um, over the past 10 to 12 years. All right, Kanyiso, thank you so much uh, for your time, of course, and uh, that analysis, Kanyiso uh, Chwaku there, just giving us a sense of what to expect in that crucial match uh, with Banyana Banyana.